morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where and when you are. I'm James, and this is Barry, and we're with RailroadBackdrops.com, and today we're going to show you how to install our peel and stick uh, backdrops. We've already uh, prepped the backboard here, it's just a standard hardboard that you get from uh, Home Depot, Lowe's, Menards, uh, most any building supply center. We've filled all the seeds with uh, drywall paste, sanded them all down nice and flush. And if you notice, we counter some called screws. That way, you won't have uh, the screws poking through your backdrop after you get it finished. All right, first thing that you want to do is take your backdrop. And we've already got these ones here installed, so we can show you how to match them up here at the seams. And so, all you do is you butt the two backdrops up against each other, making sure that the Seam matches, and go ahead and tape that up just temporarily. And then you want to make sure you run it pretty close to the top of your backdrop board here, depending on how well the backdrop board was cut and how well it was level from the floor. You may have a little bit of it showing, but you're going to come back later full of blue paint in there. If you're a perfect carpenter, then you won't have any of this showing. So, alright, then so Barry's going to go ahead and tack that up. And if you notice, we color coordinated ourselves so that I will blend in with the sky, Barry will blend in with the trees, and that way you may lose us from time to time in the video. Alright, grab your roll of tape there, Barry. Thank you. And what we're going to do here is called the uh, hinged dry method. And hopefully we'll get another video later on showing you the uh, wet method to do this that some of you may feel more comfortable doing. Pick out a section that you are going to feel comfortable. Most people, it's about uh, two to three feet that you'll be comfortable working with. And just put a masking tape. Usually the uh, yellow tape or the vanilla tape works better than the blue or the green painter's tape. They usually don't have enough hold to do this uh, properly. They have a tendency to start peeling off because it's such a low tack tape. All right, and you're gonna wanna take a little piece of tape here to help you get the backing off. Now, as you can see on the cell adhesive, it has a shiny backing here. And so what you want to do to help take that off is just put a little piece of tape tab there to the corner and then you can separate the two pieces of tape and you can fold that back to pack that up there. And then that helps pull your tape backing, I mean your, your clear backing and helps pull it off. Sometimes you might have a little extra piece that gets stuck there. So you may have to, uh, this backing is a really thin plastic. Sometimes it will tear. So just put another piece of tape there and get the half of tears. All right. And what you want to do is take your scissors. Cut your backing straight up. Throw that away later. Um, I just need to squeeze you a little dry here. All right. Take that little piece of tape off. Now you want to hold it out away from the wall and then come through your squeegee right down the center. Pulling it away from the wall. And then you want to go down to the bottom half. And then go up for your top half. Creases that you might, might need in there. 
Okay, now when you use this method, the dry method, you have to be very careful because once it's down, it's down. It won't, it's not reusable if you try to, to peel it back up. So that's how you lay the dry method. Then to do the rest of it, what you do here is pull your tape off. Then you want to carefully roll it, keeping it pulled tight on your tape. Keeping it even when you roll it. Take this tape off. And now, what you'll do is, I'm a little too far, but it's a little too close to, don't get too close to where your tape cut was, otherwise you'll get your back and stuff behind your tape cut there. Clear part, try not to get it on the adhesive part, otherwise, it'll stick to itself there. But see how nice and easy that that, that it peels off your uh, plastic. Okay, I see my one thing else there stuck underneath. Alright. So then you peel that back again with. Whatever, how far you feel comfortable. Take that part of the steam away. Now, you want to roll this back up to where you made your cut line. That will give you a indication of how far you need to squeeze it. And again, keep it away from the backboard, pull it nice and tight, and right down the center. Alright, so that's how we do the dry method and just duplicate that process all the way out. Now, some people don't feel comfortable enough doing that because, as I said, once it sticks, it sticks. So we also have what we call the wet method. Let's uh, peel this back in, off here. The process is all basically the same, except, see, it's sometimes hard to peel off that plastic. That's why we use the little piece of tape to uh, separate it. Normally on videos like this, they say, do not try this at home, but obviously we want you to do this at home. <laughs> so we can't say that. All right. So again, you just peel off your, peel your plastic backing. And then now, instead of letting it dry, we've got a common household spray bottle there, and a filled with water, and just one or two drops of dish soap you don't want to put a lot in there, because otherwise it'll take too long to dry out. You just want one or two. That'll give you a couple of minutes that you can uh, have the adhesive to be somewhat uh, uh, reusable for a few seconds. In case you lay it in properly. Alright, so just spray that on the back. Spray there, and then when you come down, because of the soap, you can peel it right back off for a few. You've got a few seconds there to peel it off. So in case you need to readjust it, it gives you some time. Now, 
if you're applying this to another surface, uh, like a foam core or some kind of a paper coated surface, you don't want to use the wet method obviously because it'll destroy your surface. You can use the wet method on any hardboard, styrene, aluminum. Uh, you can use it on drywall, although if you use it on just painted drywall, it does take a, a, a little extra time to dry. So you have to kind of wait in between steps a little bit for the soap and water to sort of dry out a little bit. All right, so you get that position. And then we'll just come to our last section here. And if you haven't cut your fingernails in a couple of days, it's easy to get this off. Or you can also get a razor blade or a detector knife underneath there just to be sure you don't cut the, uh, the back in here. Alright, then give it a good spray. And you don't need necessarily two people. It's just it's helpful if you have uh, someone with you. If not, just uh, have a table or something that has your tape and your uh, water and your squeegee on it so it's within easy reach or put it in your pockets or something. Alright, again, come right down to the center. And then squeegee it up or down, whichever way you, you want to go first. And then what that does is any extra water, so if it's built up under there, it'll push it right out the top and the bottom. here and before we do the scenery we have the uh, only backdrops on the market that you can absolutely truly be safe doing that because as you saw you put the tape on here it'll come off you can get alcohol on here you can get your scenery spray on here uh, you can get sculpt mold your plaster whatever on here and it'll all just wash right off with any kind of uh, dish soap or Windex or alcohol any kind of household cleaners because uh, we have a protective coating on all of these that uh, gives it this nice matte finish, non glare finish, makes it scratch resistant, makes it waterproof, and as I said, it makes it all your scenery material proof. So if you have any other questions, uh, give us a call, railroadbackdrops.com, 800 216 9202, or you can go to the website, www.railroadbackdrops.com. Thank you very much.